All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up. We're in James chapter 2. We're making our way right through the book of James. And just a little reminder, the writer of this book was none other than Jesus' half-brother. And, uh, you know, just imagine what it must have been like to grow up with Jesus as your half-brother. You know, mom and dad saying, James, why can't you be a little bit more like Jesus, right? Talk about big shoes to fill. Uh, be reminded in the Gospels, the Bible says that Mary and Jesus' brothers and sisters had come to visit him. And Jesus will tell his disciples, he'll say, who is my mother or my brother, my sisters, but he or she who does the will of the Father who sent me. The implication is at that point, Mary and the, the boys didn't yet believe that Jesus was God in human flesh. Well, Mary did, but the brothers didn't. And it wasn't until after Jesus' resurrection that James came to the saving faith. And uh, remember today, Jesus rose from the dead. And as we go through this book, we're learning some very practical things. James would go on to be the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, definitely more of a doer, you know, more into works. He didn't believe salvation was by works, but he definitely emphasized the works part of this thing. And we'll see that as we move through uh, the book of James. But James chapter 2, it says, My brethren, listen, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. Now, listen, I don't know if you know this yet, but you see that word hold there. You know, you and I, as a child of God, now that we have been saved, if you're listening to this devotion and you've said yes to Jesus Christ, you believe Jesus died on the cross for all of your sins, was buried, and on the third day rose again. The Bible says that's the good news, the gospel. If you've received that, embraced that, confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believed in your heart God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you're saved. And now you hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. You hold it. You can share this great message, this great meal with people that are in desperate need of it. You can tell others about Jesus. And James says, don't just tell others about Jesus. Don't just tell the people you like. Don't just tell the people that are in your sphere of influence. More specifically, James is telling the 12 tribes of Israel, the Jewish people, remember that's his primary audience. Don't just tell the rich about Jesus, about the Messiah. Don't hold the gospel with partiality. You know, I can't encourage you enough on a daily basis to go into this lost world and to ask, Holy Spirit, who would you have me to minister to today? You know, God, I give you the, the, the movement in my life to put god on my schedule. You know, not coincidences, but god on my schedule to lead my every day. And that's what James is saying. Watch this verse two. For if there should come into your assembly, so into the church service, a man with gold rings, fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place, and say to the poor man, you stand there or sit here at my footstool, have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Now, this is important. James is now talking about not just how we share the gospel with the lost world, but how we function in the house of God. In the house of God, there's to be no partiality. There needs to be level, level ground at the foot of the cross. And you know why there needs to be that? You know why? Because there is. Because the ground at the cross is level. You know, the ground at the cross is level, and you know the ground... At the, at, the, at the white throne judgment where every single person will one day be judged who has rejected Jesus Christ and his righteousness, they'll be judged. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that there'll be this massive line of humanity waiting to be judged by the Lord and it'll be small and great. You know, if Steve Jobs died apart from Christ and a homeless drug addict died apart from Christ, in the line waiting to be judged from, by God, they'll be standing right next to each other. There's no VIP section. There's no private jets. There's no back room. There's level ground at the judgment seat of Christ. And listen, there's level ground at the cross. Jesus forgives the sins of a rich man, and Jesus forgives the sins of a poor man. Jesus loves everybody. He desires no one to perish. 
And when it comes to God's house, we need to embody that. We need to love one another. That's what makes the church so powerful, the body of Christ. It's that, it's that we're people that have been saved by grace through faith. And the grace that God's shown us, now we get to extend that to other folks. We get to share the good news. We get to, in the body of Christ, sit next to people that probably outside of Jesus, before we were a Christian, we probably wouldn't have done life with most of these people, you know. But now that we're the body, it's, 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 it's all different races. It's different ethnicities. It's different ages. It's different, you know, socioeconomic statuses, different occupations. And we all come together and we, we, we eat of the same bread, the word of God. We, we drink of the same water, the Holy Spirit. We're washed in the same blood, the blood of Jesus. And we need to be a people that show no partiality. So today, you hold the salvation. You hold the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ in your hand because you're saved. Share the message today without partiality. Ask the Holy Spirit to direct you who to share it with. You'll be blessed. God is preparing hearts of people around your life today to hear the life-saving message. I can't encourage you enough. Share it. Share it generously. And Father, bless your people. Lord, may we be a people that live without partiality. Paul would say in his letter, he would say, I know I no longer judge anyone according to the flesh. He saw everyone through the lens of the cross, through the finished work of Jesus. And Lord, we pray we would do the same. May that be how we share the gospel, how we live our life outside of the church, but also when we gather, may we love one another. In Jesus' name, amen.